Prosecutors arrested and charged a Trump supporter on Wednesday with election interference for satirical images he had posted on social media in 2016. What implications does this case have for free speech? During and after the election, tech giants like Facebook and Twitter censored posts by conservatives because they didn't pass their fact checks. They even permanently deleted Trump's accounts on both platforms and banned many of his supporters. But those were private companies.、Uh, the most they could do was to delete posts from their users and ban them outright. Now the stakes are getting higher. Twitter user Ricky Vaughn faces up to 10 years in prison for humorous photoshops or memes he posted online in 2016, which was more than four years ago. Those memes largely poked fun at Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign and criticized her policies. Twitter user Ricky Vaughn was a prolific content creator during the 2016 election year, writing tens of thousands of tweets. Many of them were political commentary from a pro-Trump perspective. During that time, Vaughn had created original photoshopped images which parodied Clinton's social media ads, showing pictures of female U.S. soldiers accompanied by the hashtag. Draft our daughters and over-the-top pro-war slogans. The images are a commentary on Clinton's perceived war mongering, as she had promised in 2016 to take U.S. military actions against the Russian and Syrian forces if elected president. One of the images Vaughn later posted apparently encouraged Clinton supporters to vote for her via text messages. Of course, those votes would not be counted, and federal prosecutors say that Vaughn had committed vote theft. The federal complaint also referenced Vaughn photoshopping pictures of celebrities to make them appear as if they supported Trump. U.S. Attorney for the State of New York Seth Ducharme, who filed the complaint, said that Vaughn's social media posts jeopardized the electoral process and threatened to subvert the democratic process. Conservatives have complained that these charges were simply meant to censor right-wing voices. Vaughn's Twitter account was vehemently pro-Trump, and almost no one would have mistaken his photoshops as valid instructions on how to vote. It was a jab, they said, at how dumb Democrats were. They also accused the charges as political bias, pointing to one instance of another Twitter user posting a video telling Trump supporters to vote with their cell phones on election day, but that person was undisturbed by law enforcement. Others have raised the issue of whether what Vaughn did was illegal in the first place. Prosecutors are charging him under 18 U.S. Code Section 241. Arguing that his social media actions deprived individuals of their constitutional rights to vote, I spoke with Attorney William J. Baker Jr., founder and president of Freedom X, about the legal and political context of this case. So, prosecutors are charging Douglas Mackey, also known as Ricky Vaughn, under 18 U.S. Code Section 241. They allege that he conspired to. Injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate people from exercising their constitutional rights. In this case, the right to vote, which is illegal under that statute. So, can you explain whether、uh, Mackey's action would fall under the accepted legal definitions of those terms, and what legal precedents are relevant to this? Well, the charging complaint is rather vague as to what he actually did to. Uh, intimidate or、uh, invade any particular rights of of people in general.、Uh, what he did was he engaged in some sort of scheme that、uh, allegedly engaged in some kind of scheme intended to、uh, intended to convert votes for Hillary Hillary Clinton in 2016 to votes for Donald Trump, and he did that through various misleading means. Now the charging statute, eighteen U.S.C. section two forty one, requires one of two conditions:、uh, either two or more people are conspiring to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate somebody else、uh, in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege under the Constitution or under any United States law, or 
one or two people are conspiring to disguise on the highway or on the premises of another with the intent to prevent or hinder another's free exercise or enjoyment of a right, in this case, voting rights. Well, they they apparently aren't specifying that second condition. Mm -hmm. The government is specifying the first condition. But if you look at the specific language of that condition in the language of the uh, charging document, uh, they're claiming that Mackey conspired to injure other people in their voting rights. We, we know the complaint doesn't allege any type of injury uh, and uh, uh, or oppress somebody engaged in their right to vote. There's no language specified in the complaint of Mackey oppressing anybody or threatening. There's no threat and there's no intimidation. Even if you were to stretch the meaning of the word intimidation, there's no language in the charging document that suggests, as a matter of fact, that he intimidated anybody or pressured anybody into voting in a way that isn't isn't a traditional form of voting. Hmm. So in that case, do you think uh, Mackey will be convicted of any of the charges and receive jail terms? Under this complaint, I would think it's preposterous to, to believe that the government would be able to prosecute him. Um, and here's why. First of all, as I've already said, he didn't injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate anybody into doing anything. Uh, I am unaware of anyone who has claimed victimhood as somebody who fell for his scheme. Uh, and I would suggest that anybody who did fall for his scheme uh, and who claims to be that naive and vulnerable and incapable of determining what the proper procedure is for casting a vote in a general election, that that person may deserve to be a victim. Uh, because uh, what, what he was really engaged in was a form of deception that is not unlawful. Um, it didn't deprive anybody of a property right or property interest, and it didn't interfere with anybody's voting rights or any other constitutional right or right under federal law. So for those reasons, uh, I, I think that this charging uh, document does not allege facts sufficient to um, outline the elements of the crime that's alleged. And even though the federal government could amend the complaint to try to state a different legal theory, um, under this legal theory, it just does not seem plausible that he'd ever be convicted. And uh, uh, I think the case could be could be tossed out very quickly. So uh, we know that there's another case where another Twitter user posting video telling Trump supporters to vote with their cell phones on election day. That person was undisturbed. That person was undisturbed by law enforcement. So do you think these two cases are comparable? Uh, this complaint seems to be a political hit job. And the reason I say that is because it's brought in the Eastern District of New York um, to protect the Clinton administration or the Clinton candidacy in uh, 2016. And Hillary Clinton is, of course, uh, resides in or near that district. Um, it is being brought selectively against somebody who supports Donald Trump and somebody who supports um, the right. Other cases where the same form of political psyops or, or uh, uh, dirty tricks are being done um, are also being done on the left. And I'm unaware of any case where somebody who is performing these same tactics on the left has been accused under this statute. Uh, to me, it looks like selective prosecution. And it's no different than any tactic the left has been using to try to, using to, try to silence conservative voices and Trump supporters. Um, it's just one more way of trying to put the fear of God into people. 
so that they will self-censor on the internet and elsewhere. 